Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Connect. Uh, today we have Amit Kumbasi from our systems engineering and marketing team talking about grid infrastructure. So really excited to have you on board today. Thanks Adrian. Um, and maybe to start things off, you know, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in, in the grid space? Yeah, so uh, the market that we focus on is, is in the industrial space, right? And within industrial, we talk to customers in the grid infrastructure sector and we solve their system level challenges, right? By that we mean sensor data acquisition, uh, low power data processing, and we also look at wired and wireless communication, and we also uh, solve the AC to DC power uh, source generation as well. So those are some of the uh, subsystem challenges that we help solve. Uh, but today we'll look at uh, how um, wireless connectivity solution from TI is being used in some of the grid uh, end equipment. Okay, very cool. And, and maybe to start things off, you know, what are some of the end equipments that TI is enabling? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. So there are a lot of uh, applications within grid where wireless connectivity is used, uh, but maybe I'll give a couple of examples, right? So uh, the first thing that comes to mind is a fault indicator. Um, a fault indicator is, think of a sensor which is hanging on the wire. Uh, it's used in distribution, power distribution, so it could be overhead or underground. Um, they are monitoring for any faults in the power transmission lines. And the idea is if you catch the fault fast enough, then you can deploy technicians to go fix it uh, at the earliest possible instance so that way there is power flowing back into the homes. Okay. And this is one application where very low power data transfer is needed. And this is an area where reliable data and very fast uh, uh, latency is required. So okay. this is an area where low power wireless is, uh, is being used. And low, low power, and you've got some cool drawings here. So when you talk about low power, are we, are we harvesting energy off, off the power, power lines, off yes, the grid? Yes, uh, in that particular application we are, and that's one of the key reasons why we want to use as low as energy as possible to run the electronics. Okay, very cool. Yeah, and the, the next example I have is for a substation automation space. So in a substation automation space, what happens is you have multiple primary expensive assets. Uh, think of transformers, circuit breakers that are all conditioning power, stepping them up, stepping down before it goes to all the uh, end users. Uh, now, for all of these end equipments, you have a, a wired or a wireless connectivity backbone where you're streaming the data, right? And then here's a, a particular layout. Uh, as you can see, these uh, things are kind of spread out. And if it's spread out, then uh, low power wireless is a, is a very efficient way of connecting all of these to one data collector. Uh, and this can be done either at the assets using transducers and sensors, or you could even do this at a, at a secondary end equipment level where you have relays or IEDs or terminal units. Even they can be collecting the data and then sending it in a wireless uh, domain. Cool. Awesome. So, so these are the, the two end equipments that, that CI in particular is focusing on, kind of fault indicators and, and substations. What are, what are some of the challenges that we're trying to address here? Yeah, I think uh, these are the end equipments where uh, uh, star topology makes sense. Okay. Uh, but we also have uh, mesh topology going into smart meters, e-meters, mm -hmm. where we have a pretty good solution. But in today's uh, video, we'll be covering the star connection low power solution from TI. Okay, very cool. And the key challenges are, uh, like we have discussed, low power consumption, reliable data, uh, high uh, you know, data transfer rate, which is variable, and latency has to be very low. Love it, very cool. And yeah. when you say start topology, I guess these here are your sensor nodes and your data collector here is aggregating data That's from these correct. various That's sources. Yep. Awesome, very cool. Yeah. Um, and I guess beyond the challenges, uh, what are some of the resources, collateral, deliverables TI is providing to address some of these things? Yeah, so, um, you know, you probably will end up finding a lot of people, a lot of players in the space. Where TI stands out is you get a complete solution, right? What I mean by that is you can look at the hardware offering from TI. So there is a huge portfolio of wireless connectivity uh, MCUs, and users could choose from Wi-Fi, Sub-1, Gigahertz, uh, 2.4 Gigahertz, BLE. Um, there is a whole range of chipsets from TI. Uh, beyond that, we also have EVMs and TI design boards where customers can evaluate their solution. Uh, on the software side, we have RF Studio, Smart RF Studio, and also Code Composer Studio. And the Smart RF Studio is a tool which, uh, which is pretty useful for even novice engineers who are very new to RF uh, design, right? right? 
Uh, it allows them to quickly configure, do register mapping, uh, tie different hardware pieces of hardware, uh, change the power levels, evaluate all of that. It's a, it's a pretty uh, useful tool to quickly evaluate what you're doing. Awesome. So, so for developers looking to create a connected grid type of infrastructure, yeah. you know, a lot of this, I think, is, is part of the Simplink platform, right? So we're looking at the connected microcontrollers, surrounding that with a software development kit, hardware and software tools to get the customer up and running. Yeah, that's right. That's, uh, that's exactly what it is. And then awesome. beyond that, we also have uh, the third level of support where um, we help customers through either training libraries and we also offer TI designs. And they go in detail explaining why a part is chosen, what are the benefits, and how that can be used in any application. So a lot of engineers find it helpful to go through that before they start actually implementing. It helps okay. them accelerate their design cycle. Gotcha, and, and maybe with that, let's transition to the, to the TI design. So I know there's a TI design that you worked on and you've got a little topology over there. Do you mind walking us through the, the TI design? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm highly excited to show uh, this TI design that uh, my team worked on and we were here, what we are trying to display is imagine a few fault indicators or sensors. Uh, the example we have taken is uh, up to nine fault indicators and they're all talking to one data collector. Uh, so think of uh, new engineers coming on board trying to design this for any company that, out there. So what we show is how do you do the actual PAN setup? How do you uh, set up the network? How do you establish the uh, communication link? And as we do that, we also demonstrate the same for various frequency bands throughout the world. Okay. And then beyond that, what we also cover is, because low power is the primary criteria here, so in some of these end equipments, you don't transfer data all the time. Right. You only transfer only when there is a fault. So we showcase how to get into the beacon mode and how do you minimize power. And, and this is where our solution is highly differentiated from what's available in the market. Uh, when you go to beaconing in five seconds interval, we are as uh, we're consuming power in the tens of microamps. Oh, wow. Now, you could bring down the beaconing to a second where you jump up to 100 to 200 microamps, but, this, but that still is a very low power compared to the rest of the solutions that is out there. Very cool. Yeah, and then uh, we do the same for various uh, data rates between these end equipments because remember, Variable data transfer is also one of the necessity of something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've shown the power profile for, uh, for the transmitter, for the receiver, which kind of helps the system designers solve some of the problems right from get-go. Gotcha, so there's lots of knobs the customer can turn to optimize their, their use case. Absolutely, and I think this is where um, the TI design comes in handy, TIDA-00816. But like I said, we have a complete solution for all the great customers out there even with minimal expertise or exposure to RF. Awesome, well thank you so much Amit. I, I learned a lot today. Um, and if, for customers wanting to get started here, the TI Design, TIDA00816 uh, is where customers can go, learn That's more right. about the low power capabilities of the Simplink products that enable a, a connected grid infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And I highly recommend that if you are working in the wireless connectivity space, uh, this would be something that you can look for when you do a star network. Gotcha, perfect. Very cool. Thank you so much, Amit. And thank you guys for watching. Be sure to tune in next week where we'll bring in another expert to dive deeper into the Simplink platform. Um, and be sure to also tweet at us at Sensor to Cloud if you have any new topic ideas or feedback on the show. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys later. Yeah, bye. Thank you.